the Aston Elements studio microphone, which is here. How I came by it. Well, I was reading a copy of Sound on Sound, and they had a, a review of it. It's made in England, in Britain, and it's unusual in that it's um, a dynamic studio microphone with a large diaphragm. And from what it said in the review, a couple of things caught my eye. One of them is that the uh, diaphragm is made of something similar to mylar, which I was interested in because the uh, Biodynamic M88 from 1962, when it was designed, used a Hostafan, which is a kind of mylar, apparently. I don't know. Just have to go with what I read. I'm quite careful, but... So I was interested in that. I thought, wow, yeah, a new dynamic microphone with this uh, light material. And secondly, it said that the uh, frequency response was flat and from low to high. Rather similar to this, actually. And also, it's, uh, what should we say, affordable, I think is the term people use, at about £160 in the UK. And uh, it's unusual being an active dynamic in that it requires phantom power. You can read online the reasons why uh, to help it give have that uh, to boost the signal. Apparently, it ends up with low impedance uh, capsule, so you need to boost that. Apparently, that's how I came by it. Sorry about the creaking chair. You wouldn't believe the amount of time I've tried to hunt down what exactly it is that's squeaking, but it doesn't do it when I'm not sitting on it, no matter what I do. So anyway, uh, maybe I should uh, exchange it for something. What the manufacturer says. Well, they say a lot. You can look on their website. It's an active dynamic studio microphone. It's got a Ridion, which is kind of Mylar, capsule. Superior performance at low cost. They call it the people's mic because uh, it seems 4,000 customers worldwide helped define the sound through listening tests. It says it has punchy bass and rejection, the punchy bass and rejection of a dynamic mic, and the open, natural sound of a ribbon. Well, I thought, seeing as I have one of the finest, an example of one of the finest, I think, dynamic mics uh, that I've come across, Biodynamic M88, and happens to be Biodynamic again, it's a ribbon mic. Both of these are stage mics, but there's a ribbon. Here's a top-class dynamic. And that's what they say uh, this should have the qualities of. Sound on Sound said it has a one and a half inch diaphragm and that the cradle is made of TPEE -E plastic. Let's have a look at the graph and see if we can uh, deduce anything. I've put a red line, dotted line through the centre at zero well. Hmm. Very, very flat. As you can see, a slight dip from about one to five. Slight, tiniest hump just over five. And then it seems to continue flat to 20,000. Quite spectacular. I imagine this is a smoothed trace, not an individual one, where you get all the little squiggles. It's been smoothed out, I imagine. Well, no proximity trace at the low end, which uh, many manufacturers don't do these days. I'll have a look from above at uh, the sort of fit, finish, feel, accessories and so on. And after that, Crack on with it. If you've seen the unboxing video I did, you'll have seen most of this. The microphone itself. Apparently there are some screws under there, so sound on sound say, to take this apart, which I won't do. Those are the locating uh, sockets for the mount, which you'll see in a moment.
and the LED thing which lights up. So no complaints with that at all. Seems well built. This, as you may have seen, is the, the pop shield, which fits magnetically. Now on mine, as you might see, it doesn't quite want to... It's only a small thing. And it seems that um, one magnet here, the magnets are here, I used a metal object to find out, is weaker, so it means it... You can see it's not quite lined up. That side's not got much... Whereas that side's very snappy. I did uh, send them a video of this and they said, no, that's no good. Um, so they're going to sort it out, send me a replacement. This then is the cradle. A bit difficult to see with it in the background. Let me move that out of the way. Not that much to see. Comes with an insert, which I've removed. It does feel kind of uh, flimsy, but I looked up this PTEE, -E, whatever it is, and it's uh, quite durable, so, hey. The microphone, as you've probably seen, fits in like so. Then you have to line it up with the lugs there, on that side. And then, don't forget to snap them in. because uh, if you don't, <laughs> it'll fall straight through. So there it is. Seems fine in different positions. One other thing, so you attach this like this, or if you're not using it as you've seen other people, so it goes upside down. Oops, well mine would do if mine, mine's not too, uh, yeah. Uh, when it is the right way up, you can see there is some chance of it wobbling and hitting the, depending on where you've got it, of course you do it like that, doesn't so much, but by making that noise, so if, of course if you, if you hit the thing you're going to get the sound of the hitting anyway, uh, but you're going to get a, an additional sort of clicking sound from that perhaps. Time to have a listen. I'm on the uh, Earthworks Icon Pro. I'm not comparing the two because there's a, they're a different uh, target for each. But uh, this one's very good, so I might compare some aspects. Here I am. Obviously, I'm hand-holding because I want to do stuff with it. So what do I notice immediately? What do I notice immediately? A few things. I notice a kind of ooh, ooh, ooh. And something there and I uh, do notice the fan from the computer this one's pointing in a different direction its uh, rejection is there this one's rejection is at the laptop but any, anyway I notice that if I bring it closer yeah you're gonna get the brrr because I'm hand holding it hiss hum tongue uh, hissing then If I notice anything there, I think um, generally things kind of feel a bit muted. I think, uh, or it, again, it's uh, the detail. I don't think. There just seems to be more. Seems to be more to be had, which perhaps isn't coming through. But it depends on what you want to use it for. Um, I'm talking vocals the whole time, really, here. I don't know if it's designed for guitar and all sorts of things as well. Um, humming.
fops is um I've done that fops s is s is s s s s is it's okay you can tame that if you want it's all part of the mix maybe uh pops that put the filter on sorry about the noises peter piper picked a peck 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 as good as it gets really s is kind of done the uh, breath who do you think you're fooling 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 works well just give you some idea at the risk of uh, my ears peter piper picked a peck who do you think yeah proximity i'll leave it on. oh no i'll leave it on we're gonna get close proximity 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 there 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 very smooth a lot of it and um generally my feeling is a little bit old school in that uh, the proximity is a little bit uh, blubbery maybe proximity there proximity there proximity there proximity there polar response I'm gonna whip this off we'll be done with all the rumbling shortly I assure you this is the front this is the front turning slightly to the side slightly to the side more to the side more to the side round about there you can start to hear rejection more to the side exactly on the side exactly on the side so if you get any leakage from here here uh, it's a very different sound from around the front heading towards the back heading towards the back heading towards the back even more towards the back even more towards the back fully on the back fully on the back so it seems to be quite a lot of uh, low frequency stuff which comes in from uh, the rear of the microphone handling and self-induced noise I'll do the handling noise when it's on the mount obviously but it's not uh, well not really it may be hand holdable maybe but why would you want to well who knows I often do actually and self-induced noise it seems quiet enough to me electronically so I guess what I'll do now which I'm quite looking forward to is compare it to the ribbon and the other dynamic I beg your pardon. One of the first things I should have said was uh, Happy New Year, as it's New Year's Day. A uh, couple of thoughts. One is, here's an SM58, so you get an idea of the size. About the same from top to bottom, but obviously a completely different mic, but it gives you an idea. The, o the other thing, yes, was about the, uh, the grip. So it tends to have a... It has a tendency sometimes to hit the the mount and I thought well obviously one magnet being weaker as it would seem on mine needs to be sorted and perhaps just a sample variance you know but maybe they could just put a, a rubber pad on there so that would uh, bring it further away from the mount and also just make a slightly nicer meeting I have here another dynamic passive not active which they mention as being uh, one of the aspects and uh, I have here a ribbon which they also mentioned I'm gonna put the graphs on and have a look there you can see the graphs uh, I've tried to line them up as best I can, well, from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, but as you can see, the uh, intermediate frequencies don't quite line up, so I put some red lines there, and I put a red line down the middle, 
roughly where a flat would be. So you can see the Aston element looks very good. And compared to the Bayer Dynamic M88, you can see there's quite a rise in the top end there. There's no proximity on any of these. So the, the Bayer Dynamic looks a little bit base light, but that's not the case. The M500, as you can see, uh, <laughs> takes off at around 3 kilohertz. Wow. Other than that, very flat. And the M88, more of a gradual rise to a kind of peak around 5-ish, 6. So the element looks good. That's what they look like according to the graphs. And we'll see what they uh, sound like according to our ears. Well, it looks like Christmas Day, doesn't it? Here we go. I'm on the uh, Icon Pro at the Mo. I'm going to kill that and go to the Element. Now I'm on the Element. And then I'm going to go to, if I can get it right, uh, the, bio, uh, the M88. So this is uh, the Element, which is, as you know, a dynamic, as... As you know, a dynamic. I'm moving to the Bayer M88. This is the Bayer M88, and on the s -s -s, you could hear that broad uh, rise at the top. Top. This is the Bayer M88. I'm going to move on to the M500 ribbon. This is this is the M500 ribbon. This s -s, this is the N500 ribbon. What I'm going to do then, because uh, these two. Uh, stage mics designed with that cut. I'm going to take a bit of the top off both of these to see if I can get it, well, as near as I can to the other two, really. I'm on the Aston Element, moving to the M88 with the top reduced somewhat. Now I'm on the M88. Now I'm on the M88 with the top taken down just a bit. Now I'm on the M500 with the top taken down just a bit. Proximity. This is the Aston element. Ah, this is the Aston element. Ah, this is the Aston. Let me give myself something. This is the Aston element. Ah, this is the Aston element. Ah, this is the Aston element. This is the M88. Ah, this is the M88. Ah. This is the M88. Uh, this is the M88. This is the M500. Uh, this is the M500. Uh, this is the M500. This is the Aston element. This is the Aston element. Well, I hope that's uh, given enough of an idea. I don't really know. Actually, let me go on the element, because that's what it's about. Why do I say I don't really know? Whilst I'm on it, let me take the 100 hertz cut. This is the 100 hertz cut. This is the 100 hertz. This is with a 100 hertz cut. This is with the hertz back in. This is with a 100 hertz cut. This is with a hundred hertz. Is it me or is there something funny going on there? Hold on. Don't know. It was almost it was a kind of doubling or something going on down there. I don't know. So let me take the hundred. Let me put the hundred hertz back in and roll off some of the bass instead, which <laughs> the frequency I can't remember. I've had a glass of wine. Uh, cheers. Let me take the bass off a bit. Let me take the bass off a bit there. Ah. So I don't know what that 100 hertz does, but it uh, seems to do something weird. So that's with the bass rolled off a little bit. That's with the bass rolled off a bit, bringing the bass back in, bringing the bass back in, as you can hear, boosting the bass just a little. And you can hear. So, it, yeah, for me, there's a kind of um, a slightly brooding, <laughs> almost the whole time. At the top end, That's there, but I, 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 again, I kind of find there maybe isn't the detail. Depends on what you want. I'm a bit of a detail person, actually. So it depends on what you want. But that's my, um, so far, 
is what I noticed. It's not really designed for handheld singing. But I'll ask the man if he wants to give it a spin. Maybe you're poor, maybe you have wealth Maybe in demand, or maybe the baby on the shelf Whatever your situation, there's one thing you should do Reject all automation and let me work on you Ah, uh, uh, Mr. Manual, <laughs> automatic's not my style, no, no Nah, I like to manually manipulate you Guarantee to make you smile That's Oh, the man is no my, what a man. The man is no my style. I let the manually manipulate you, guaranteed to make you manually manipulate you, guaranteed to make you. Ha! It's guaranteed to make you smile. I got the manually manipulate you. It's guaranteed to make you smile. El curioso recién legado. <laughs>